Hello and welcome to the Telegraph Studios. I'm Alastair Greener and today we're talking about the latest developments in digital vouchers. And joining me is David Tim from iMovo. Good morning. Good morning. Wherever I go these days, whether it be a supermarket or a shop or wherever, I'm always inundated with vouchers and special offers mm -hmm. and so on. Wouldn't it just be easier to reduce prices? Well, firstly, you're quite right. Vouchers are absolutely everywhere. And to an extent, they've lost their effectiveness because there are too many of them. And as consumers, what we tend to do is just filter out things which aren't interesting to us. And most estimates suggest that we're bombarded with about 5,000 marketing messages every day. And this is a real problem if you're in the consumer goods industry because you've got to rise above all of that noise and get your message heard. So how do vouchers rise above that noise? Well, you can be a lot more selective. Um, it, take an example, for instance, of you could give a 10% price cut on, say, 2 million products which are already on the shelves of shops. And probably what will happen then is you'll sell exactly the same amount of product that you would do otherwise. And with a 10% price cut, you're not really going to attract that many new consumers. Um, Contrast that with, uh, say, taking that same amount of money and trying to uh, attract 200,000 consumers that don't currently uh, use your product with a free one. Now, if your product's any good and if the consumers like that, they're much more likely to go on and buy that in the future and increase your market share. So it's a much, much better spend of your marketing dollar. For this to work, obviously you need the retailers to be on board. Yes. So what are the biggest challenges for them in accepting these digital vouchers? Well, imagine if you're a retailer and somebody comes in and they're showing you a barcode displayed on a mobile phone. You've got no guarantee that that's genuine. After all, anything which is distributed or displayed digitally can be copied. Look at the music industry or the film industry for examples of that. So what you're going to want to make sure is that that is a valid voucher. And the best way to do that would be to check it against a live database of vouchers at the point that it's used just to make sure that it's absolutely valid. Now to do that, you probably aren't going to want to spend any money on expensive new equipment for your store. Um, and so the best way of doing that is to use something which is already in the store, and that might be the EPOS system or it might be the credit card payment terminal. You talked there about wanting to verify it's actually legitimate. Is there an epidemic uh, scale of fraud here? And why and where do retailers actually lose control of the scheme? Uh, I think ep epidemic is probably a bit strong. It's a, it's a growing problem. And the, the real area where it is a problem is, is, again, digital. It's anything which can be distributed digitally by internet or email it's possible to make perfect copies of those and think of it like this is that if you can make a perfect copy of a banknote people would make as many as they wanted to and in, the, in some ways vouchers are currency and so uh, internet and email distribution of vouchers is encouraging people to make, make copies of money. So what's the solution and perhaps you can give me some examples? Yes and th well, there's a couple of solutions I mean one is that you can take insurance policies out against that sort of uh, fraud and abuse but the, the worse the problem comes the the more expensive the insurance is becoming so the only the long-term solution to this is to issue unique vouchers and to check those at the point they're used to make sure that they're valid to give you an example we were involved in a campaign recently where we were distributing free products and the consumer was given the choice of a voucher delivered direct to their mobile phone or they could print one out from the internet and take it to a store now with the store printed ones or the ones used in store they were used on average five times whereas they should have only been used once. But now our vouchers, because they're unique, were only used once. You mentioned the word unique there. What is it about the system that does make it unique so that vouchers are only used once? Well, the, the vouchers themselves each have a serial number, and that's a unique number. And then what we do is then track the use of that unique number at the place that it's used and make sure that it hasn't expired and that it can be used at that particular uh, location. So given the fact that we now see these as a secure form and an effective form, how do you actually measure the success of a campaign? Well, there's three basic measures that we use, and the first is called cost per impression, which is the total cost of running a campaign divided by the number of people who've seen it. Now, that's an interesting figure, but it's not really that useful because it doesn't give any real indication of how successful it's been. So the two which are better are cost per response. Now, that indicates the number of people who've seen the offer, said, yes, please, that looks like a good thing, um, I'd like to get that voucher. But the really important one is cost per redemption, because that's the number of people who've gone on to use that voucher and take it to a store. And what would be an acceptable number normally? Well, we can get a redemption rate of 
close to 100%. We've seen 87%, 91% in the past, but conversely, the redemption rate can be low as 2%. Because the issue here isn't the, the, the method that we're using, it's the value of the offer to the consumer. And the more valuable the offer, generally, the more likely it is consumers will redeem that voucher. We always think about vouchers in very much the retail market, mm -hmm. and indeed you've mentioned that yourself, but are there any other industries where these vouchers can apply? There are there's some interesting areas which uh, aren't the obvious ones. Uh, one is local and central government, who uh, occasionally need to make payments to people who don't have bank accounts. Now, there's about one and a half million people in the UK who are in that position, so sending them a cheque isn't very useful for them. Instead, if you, they can get a voucher which they can take down to a local store and exchange that for cash, 12 hours a day, seven days a week at 60,000 locations. It's much, much more useful for them. In the energy sector, for instance, last year the Department of Energy and Climate Change made rebates to 4.2 million customers that pay their energy bills in cash. Now again, these people don't always have bank accounts and so a, a voucher is much more, more convenient. But regardless of the industry, the challenges are still the same. It has to be simple, it has to be secure, it has to be trusted by retailers. Well, it looks like we're going to be seeing a lot more of these digital vouchers in the future. In the meantime, David Tim from iMovo, thank you very much. Thank you very much.